I'm James from Studio and 8 and if you're looking to extend your product line to things like branded socks and you want to showcase that in 3D, you're in the right place. Some of you might already be familiar with our 3D mockups, but I'm going to assume that you're not, and this is the first time you're seeing them. So when you first download the package, you can open it up and you'll see that you've got a selection of files in here. You've got a Photoshop file, which if you don't have Photoshop, you can open in Photop, which is a free alternative to Photoshop. And then you've got the Blender file, and Blender is free to use. You just need to go to blender.org to download the latest version, and you're good to go. If you have Blender installed already, just make sure you're using the latest version because often we'll release an update. You'll go ahead and download it, but it will be a newer version of the file. And if you're using old software, you're going to run into all sorts of conflicts. So make sure that you're always using an up-to-date version. So you'll see that we have our render view modes up in the top right-hand corner. So these different viewports are going to give us quick access to have a look at how the renders are working. You can see that we've already got artwork on here as well and I'm just going to rotate it so you can see what's going on. So we've got different placements and all these elements of the sock are completely customizable. So what we're going to do now is go back and open up that place your design here and then I'm going to walk you through where the different elements are on that template. So you can see that we've got this section around the ankle of the sock. Obviously you've got your left and you've got your right. So if you go back to Blender, you'll see that we've got this ankle design on the left and it goes all the way around to the inside as well. Now that is stitched together here as well. So that's the inside of the ankle seam and then that's the outside. So if you wanted to put your design there, you could. Also, you'll see that we've got this bit. This bit is the inside of the top of the sock and then this is the outside. That's the back of the sort of calf area and then that's on the shin. So I'll show you the placement for those two as well, just to make it crystal clear. So if we use the slider for the timeline to go around, you see that we've got that on the shin, and then we've got the other text detail on the back. You'll see that we've got 2024 on the heel as well. So if we go back to the file, you'll see that that is placed here, 2024. So this is the patch for the heel. Um, you can put anything on there that you like as well. So what you put on one sock and what you put on the other sock um, will be displayed correctly. So you can have a left foot design, you can have a right foot design. For example, we've got the R down on the toe here and the L. We'll go back to Blender and you can see that in situ as well. So we go back over here, rotate them around. You've got the R here and the L on that. So that's essentially how you would go and place your artwork. And the same goes for all the different elements of the sock. And what you need to do is add your artwork to each individual element as well. So for example, if we go to main top material, go in here, you'll see that we've got everything already connected with the placeholder artwork. So if I click this and then click new image, you'll see that that bit on the top of the arch of the foot has now gone. So in order to add that back in, in this example, I'm just going to use the artwork that already comes with the mock-up, place that in and it's back in there. So at the moment we've got this placeholder artwork and we can switch that off. What you notice when I did switch that off is that we've got these elements that remain and this is for an embroidery stitch. So for example, if you had your logo quite pronounced and embroidered rather than stitched into the sock, then you could. So you've got this effect. All you need to do to update that is go into this file and double click and then you'll see that if we switch that on just as a little guide, you'll see these are the elements that are going to be embroidered. So we could just go and update this by changing the color so i'm just going to make it red click ok and then and then i'm going to hide that and then save it down now what's going to happen is that embroidery area is going to be red so we could do that zoom out and then we can switch the other design back on so it's going to be a red design with white complementary text so if we want to save that down we just need to switch that off on the final guide layer we want to go export Save for web, and then make sure that you don't change these settings at all. Keep them exactly the same, so 6400 by 6400. Make sure it's a PNG, so it's transparent. And then we want to go save, and we can just put that on our desktop. So let's just change that with socks at the end. Save that down. So if we go to slot 6, we've got leg stitch material. That will be updated with that new red bit. So if we go to new image, and then we go to desktop and find our PNG, we're going to get that and place that on. 
you can see that that has now added that on. And if we wanted to change the color of that, just bring that up. Also, you've got normal map here. What that helps to do is raise things. So for example, embroidery is going to be slightly raised on the actual product. It's not going to be flat. So if you wanted to add that, then you want to add in the embossed appearance. So if you're going to do that, then there's a video here which goes into the details on how to do that. But if you don't want that, just make sure you disconnect it by dragging it away from normal map. And then that will be flat to the fabric now. So you'll see here that we've got a variety of different cameras to choose from. They are different angles or presets. So you have the choice of whichever one suits you the best. If we go to a view that's slightly further out, you've got the table here. So what I would always do to recommend speeding up the render process is render the background on its own and then render the product on its own as well. So for example, we could switch off the room and then just render an animation of this on its own. So you don't have to render the background each time. And then with the room, switch that on and then we'll go to the socks and we'll switch them off and then just render that once. You don't have to render the whole thing again and again and again because if you do, you're going to have to do 180 renders of the background for really no point. Obviously, the benefit of rendering it all if you have a fast computer is that you get that animation spinning around as well, which is great. But I appreciate that a lot of people don't necessarily have the time to do that and they want to get quick renders. So that would be the way to do it. And also when you do render something on a transparent background, you can brand the background in your own way as well. So in order to do that, if we're going to render an animation, we just want to go render. We want to go render animation. And if we wanted to do a static one, we'd go render image. And here are some settings that I would recommend as well. So at the moment we've got 1200 by 1200. That could work for you. You could speed that up massively in terms of time by changing it to something like 800 by 800. And if you wanted something like an Instagram story, you'd set that to something like 1920 by 1080. Whatever works for you, you can change that. And then in terms of speeding up that render a little bit more, if you click on the actual camera icon and you go to render, at the moment that's set to 450. You could change that to something like 200. And then if you do, make sure you click denoise and then and that'll take a bit of the noise out of the image so it'll look a lot cleaner. So as we've already got this without the socks on, let's go and render a single image of the background. Okay, so we've got our image. So all we need to do now is go to image and then save as and we'll just put that on our desktop as well. And we can call that background. And then what you would then do is go and switch the room off and then go back to the socks mockup and then make sure we're using the same camera and then we're going to go to render and then render animation and then it's going to go through and do all 180 of those in a solid 360 rotation for you i don't need to do that because i've already got one in place that i did earlier so i'm going to go back to premiere pro so what i'm going to do is go to file and then scroll down to import and you'll see here that i've got this whole render sequence of all these different pngs so i want to make sure i've got the first one selected click show options and then make sure image sequence is selected click import and then we just want to drag that onto our timeline what we'll do actually is we'll put in the background first so let's go and get the background we'll put that here and we'll use that so we'll switch that on so right click scale to frame size and then we're going to go and get our sequence put that over the top drag our background to be the right size. We might need to just position stuff a bit more as well. So we're just going to change the scale of that. We're going to lift these up slightly and that's it. Good to go. All we need to do now is export this. So go to export, make sure that you've got H.264 selected, which is an MP4. Uh, you can change it to whatever you like. So we can go to socks.animation. I'm going to save that on our desktop, click export. And that's it done. You've got your video ready to go. You can then put that on your website. You can put it on social media, whatever it is you're looking to do. So I hope this video is helpful for you. If you want to look at any of our other 3D mockups, feel free to have a little browse. If this video was useful as well, please feel free to click like and subscribe to see more content like this. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.